Hey there, Becca here from Inside the Square and welcome back to my channel. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how you can create a full width image for a blog post in your Squarespace website. We're going to use some custom CSS to turn the very first image in a blog post to stretch the full width of the screen even on mobile devices. Now there are two parts of this code that you're going to want to change to make it uniquely yours. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and I'll show you exactly how this code works so you'll understand how to edit it so it's perfect for your own website. Let's get started. So here we are inside Squarespace and you can see in this blog post, I have one main image at the top of the article here and then a second image. The code we're going to use will take whatever this first image is and stretch it to full width. So if I scroll down here, I've got the code in this article and you'll also find this code in the description below. This very first part of the code says, in an article, which means a blog post, anytime you see an image, take the very first one and apply this code. This code stretches it to the full width of the screen. After that, we've said if there's any overflow to the left or the right of the page, just hide it. We don't want any horizontal scrolling on this blog post. And then underneath that, we've got two more codes that you're going to need to update. These values right here are going to change based on the site padding that you have. This is specific for my site, but we'll want to adjust that for your own site. And I'll show you exactly how this works. I'm going to grab this code here and we're going to navigate to design and then we'll select custom CSS. I'll scroll up so we can see the image at the top here because when we paste the code, it's going to stretch to full width. I'll scroll down a little bit so you can see the other image not affected. Now let's also take a look at the mobile device. We have the full width image here as well, pretty awesome. And again, this image not affected at all. So how does this code work? I'll go back to desktop view and we'll take a look. Again, this very first part says, when you see the first image in a blog post, make sure it's full width with no padding and the position is static. So it's going to be stretched outside the parameter of the article. The second part says, if there's any horizontal flow, anything to the left or the right of the page, I want you to hide it. If we remove this part of the code, we're going to see a tiny little scroll bar down here at the bottom, which I don't want. So I pasted that code there. Feel free to remove it if you do want that horizontal scroll, but I don't recommend it. Now scrolling down here, this part is specific for anything larger than 768 pixels in width. I've scooted the image to the left to make up for the site padding that I have on this specific website. If I change this value to something like 10, it's not going to go all the way to the edge. It needed to be 14, for this specific site, but that's going to be custom for yours. So change that value until the left side of the image is flush with the left side of the website. If we stretch to the full page preview, you can see here, it's all the way to the left and it looks perfect. Again, adjust that negative 14 to suit your site. Now scrolling down here, we've got one more value instance and this is specifically for mobile screens or any screen that's smaller than 768 pixels in width. Here, my site padding is different. If we go to the mobile view, if I change this to zero, whoops, there we go. Change it to zero, you'll see it's not flush with the left side of the screen. Negative two is what I needed. Negative 14 would have been way too far for this specific screen size. Negative two suits the site padding for my own website. So again, adjust this value for desktop and tablet, adjust this value for mobile. And after you've made your changes, select save when you're done and you'll be good to go. The code that we just used is listed in the description below. Just make sure that you update both of those values, one specific for the desktop and tablet version and the other one for the mobile version of your website. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I truly hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a like and a comment and definitely subscribe to my channel because I post a brand new tutorial every single week and I wanna make sure you catch the latest. Thanks again for watching and most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now. If you liked this tutorial, you'll love my Squarespace CSS cheat sheet. Now available in a Notion database, you can have access to all of the custom codes that I use for modifying Squarespace websites. In here, you'll find selectors, pre-made style snippets, and a bunch of pro tips. So even if you're brand new to all things CSS, you're going to love the content you'll find here. To get lifetime access to this Notion database of custom code for Squarespace, visit insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS. That's insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS.